And do you see a screen says literacy intervention technology and the teacher yes. role? Perfect. Yes, okay. I'll put this on slideshow and then I'll put my pointer here. Okay. So uh, the purpose of today's, uh, of this session is to, uh, it's an attempt to answer two questions. Um, the, the first question is, uh, what is the nature of uh, teacher's role and technology integration in literacy intervention programs or literacy instruction in general? And the second question is how effective are teacher-led intervention programs compared to intervention programs where teacher's role is not as obvious? So these are the main two questions that I try to answer. Now, some previous research that uh, examined the use of technology uh, in, in literacy instruction, there are many studies uh, that have shown that we when we use technology properly, um, it helps students develop in, in a variety of uh, subjects, including literacy. Um, and there are a variety of factors that influence uh, this implementation, among which are uh, teachers, uh, skill uh, level and knowledge, that as well as other variables related to the learner and to the program itself. Um, Cassidy and Smith in 2003 did a very important review of literature, and they found uh, that um, uh, using an integrated learning system in the area of literacy requires a highly committed teacher, uh, and that teacher who's able to direct uh, the curriculum and actively guides uh, students' learning, and that goes along the line that um, individual or students, especially struggling re readers or learners will need individualized attention. Um, it, there is some people might question, why do we want to use a structured and systematic approach when we use, when we teach literacy? Um, one thing that we need to make clear that use uh, learning to read is not, um, is not as natural as learning oral language, as learning how to understand or how to speak. Um, so learning to read is a gradual process. It involves the acquisition of these distinct and sequential concepts and skills. Um, and because of that, the fact that reading or learning to read is a gradual process, instruction should also be structured, intentional, sequential, and systematic. Um, the national in, in, in the year 2000, the National Reading Panel uh, identified key components of effective literacy in, interventions, and they concluded that there are five, at least five components that need to be present. The first one is phonological awareness, which is the ability to manipulate individual sounds in spoken words. And um, the reason why this is important because it's highly co correlated to, with uh, learning to read in the future. So it's something we can uh, uh, assess uh, in young children who, haven't, who didn't go to school yet. And, and then if the student has phonological awareness deficit, we can intervene early to as much as possible um, uh, prevent uh, reading or learning disabilities. Another area is phonics and uh, alphabetics. And uh, the emphasis here is learning the letter sound correspondence, learning the spelling patterns, whether regular or irregular, uh, learning the morphemic structure. The third uh, component is uh, vocabulary. And of course, when it comes to schools, we focus on academic vocabulary and the proper use of these vocabulary words in sentences. Um, fluency and automaticity, and we all know how when you become fluent in doing something, not only reading or literacy, it, it allows you to, to learn new things, to become creative, to do uh, extra stuff. So fluency is very important. And then finally, last but not least, is reading comprehension which is the ultimate purpose of reading. Another reason why we use a structured and systematic approach, and this is specific to the English language, which is different than my native language, which is very uh, predictable and regular. 
English is it's considered a regular language, but um, but for one thing, that letter sound correspondence is not always uh, straightforward. Uh, for example, the letter C uh, has two possible sounds, S and K, and then the the sound has different ways to for spelling, like uh, the F itself, PH and GH. Uh, another uh, thing about the English language is the irregular words, the presence of irregular or exception words. And these are the words that don't obey, obey the orthographic uh, uh, letter sound correspondence, such as virtual, could, ate, sugar, etc. Another aspect of the English is uh, some words are inconsistent. So for example, the word bean is consistent because in all the words, the words that we know that ends with E-A-N, the corresponding sound is always E-N, whereas the word bead is inconsistent because there are words that end with E-A-D, but they don't sound e -d. they sound ed, like head. So because of all these reasons, we need that kind of structured approach to teach a language. Um, and let's go back after, and of course, we ex I, I expect based on that, that any intervention program will address these kinds of components um, in, in their design. Now, let's go back to the study that I conducted where I tried to answer these two questions and to, to answer the first question, which is the nature of literacy intervention programs. Um, uh, I went to the What Works Clearinghouse and um, just to give you an idea about uh, what Works Clearinghouse is all about, is it's a digital library of intervention programs and reports. Uh, the What Work uh, Clearinghouse uh, team of researchers investigate the nature of each intervention program and provide a report about uh, these intervention program. They also collect the studies that have investigated the, inf the effectiveness of a, a particular intervention program and compare these studies against rigorous set of standards. And only those studies that meet these standards are included in a meta-analysis that they conduct in order to make a decision about the overall effectiveness of the program. So I use these reports. Um, so I, uh, I, uh, the search here, the key, the keyword was literacy, inclusionary criteria, where you know early literacy grades K to five last ten years, and those programs that have a meta analysis uh, conducted, um, and then the um, I went manually. I, I went and read, made sure that all these studies uh, meet these inclusionary criteria and. The result was 19 intervention program. Two research assistants did the same thing. And the integrated reliability between what I did and what they did were 97% and 99%. Now, to understand the distinguishing features of these 19 programs, um, I read the description of these programs also from What Works Clearinghouse. Uh, in terms of you know, technology integration and teacher's role and was able to define three distinct types. The first one I call teacher implemented intervention program. The second is self-contained computer or online program. And the third time I call the third type I called software or teacher software implemented program. Uh, I explained to the same research assistant the rationale for each, and I asked them to do classification, the same classification to classify the 19 programs according to these three themes. And the integrated reliability between what they did and what I did was 91% and 96%. And this is the resulting program. So as you can see, the teacher implemented, we have many more compared it to the self-contained computer or online program compared to the teacher software implemented program. Let's talk quickly about each of these types based on their distinguishing features. Five minutes, um, please. Thanks. Okay. So the first type here, just to, to summarize, um, the first type here is it's called teacher implemented program because the teacher it takes responsibility for most of the things that take place. Now, this being said, all of these 
programs include teachers' role as well as integrate technology, but to different degrees. So there is some digital materials here, but only it's the teacher who provide that material, differentiate the material, um, assess students' um, uh, uh, progress, and then redesign the instruction. Um, the focus, again, is the same as what National Reading Panel recommended, which is phonological awareness, phonics, vocabulary, and reading comprehension. The second type is also the focus is similar, but here we are talking about, for the most part, there is a computer, a software that is that does most of the teaching. To give you an example, um, a student uh, that takes an assessment using that software, the software assigns a, a reading article, and then the student reads the article or maybe gets help from the teacher. So the teacher still is involved in one way to another. Um, and after reading the material, the student goes back to the computer station, takes uh, some tests, do some activities, um, anchor video, watch anchor videos, and takes assessment. And this kind of software uses algorithm that calcul calculates um, uh, the likelihood of a student uh, um, answering questions from the next level. So as you can see, most of the teaching here, most of the interaction is the, between the student and the software. The third type, uh, which is like a hybrid, is, is similar with the other two types in that the uh, components are the, uh, the focus is the same. But the uh, teacher um, software program that you can see the teacher is more involved. So it's not only reading the material, the teacher can provide guided instruction, but that's, but that's it. That's probably the only proportion of the program where the teacher is interacting with the student. Um, so uh, the teacher's role is greater than self-contained computer program, but it's not, it's smaller than the teacher role in teacher implemented programs. To answer the second question, which is about how effective these programs are, as you can see here, the, based on the meta-analysis that was conducted, the teacher implemented intervention program has the highest performance here and followed by the teacher software implemented program and then the self-contained software intervention program. And there is some kind of interaction here that I would like to emphasize um, that I think is, uh, if I can move this a little bit. <laughs> okay, so I'll move it as I'm. Uh, I put these uh, graphs just to shed more light on the findings that I just showed you. This graph is for teacher implemented intervention. This is self contained software and teacher implemented uh, software uh, implemented program. This is, we expect, because that's the general kind of uh, effect size. This as well. This doesn't mean it's bad. Actually, there is some improvement. So we are measuring the improvement. But here, uh, we expect everything to be in the middle. But looking at this result here, there is some sort of interaction between two variables, which are the teacher software implemented program when the focus is reading comprehension. So there is these increasing gains. Um, when it comes to using this kind of hybrid um, form of delivery uh, in teaching reading comprehension. All right, so uh, how many more minutes do I have? 34 seconds. Okay, so uh, most of the things I wanted to talk about, I already mentioned is just um, one important, in summary, um, we have reading to learn skills and le or let's say learning to, to read skills. That's how what students do when they go to school first, but then they have, we have the reading to learn skills. So it seems that the uh, uh, first two types, uh, um, the self-contained computer and the hybrid type, they focus more on reading to learn skills uh, compared to the learning to read uh, skills. Uh, we yeah, discussed this time. one. Yes, so we discussed these two. Um, these are my contact information. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to send me an email.